Hello everybody and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campus. Today we're going to be talking about battery to battery chargers. So in the past you've seen us talk about split chargers and smart alternators and the different ways you can charge the leisure battery in your vehicle. Today we're talking about battery to battery chargers and I have James from Rain Automotive because he is our resident expert. Thank you for coming by. Thank you very much for having me. And basically James is our guru when it comes to all things chargers. And so I can give you the best information. We're gonna be talking about the kit in front of us and how best to use it. Leisure electrics in a camper van can be quite confusing sometimes, can't it? So what we have got today is a real back to basics explanation about split charging and in particular if your vehicle has a smart alternator and using the battery to battery charger right absolutely we have in front of us um, a line that will divide the vehicle side and more importantly the camper van side the leisure electrics and leisure charging side so um, here we might have the alternator in your vehicle, or in particular, a smart alternator. And we've spoken about this system in a previous video, haven't we? Yes. And you can check that video about here. We've got a link to that video. And um, we will show you in that video, what is a smart alternator and how to check if your vehicle has one. So vehicle charging this side of the line, leisure charging this side of the line. What have we got in front of us? So today we've got the battery, leisure battery, not the subject of today, but mm -hmm. mainly we have the two different types of DC to DC, battery to battery chargers that we use on a regular basis. There are different times when you might use each one, something we'll go into more detail, but effectively what this is going to do is replace a split charging system in vehicles with smart alternators. It operates in a similar way, it takes the charge from your alternator via your van battery into the battery to battery charger, uses that to charge the leisure battery, but it just smooths out the variable voltage that your alternator will give you. And then when your engine's turned off, separates the two batteries so you can use your leisure battery without worrying about flattening your main van battery down. Perfect. Now, in the past, we've spoken about this little thing, which Classic. is a VSR or a voltage sensitive relay. Now, there is a even more basic version of this, which is say a 30 amp relay, yep. which will um, switch on or off or open and closed via another 12 volt signal, right? Yes. Um, advances in technology and, um, well, in terms of being safer, um, most camper vans you will buy today or convert today will have a VSR, right? Yeah, And absolutely. that will go to, or that will sense from the batteries at which voltage? 13.7 um, mm -hmm. approximately. So that voltage is only achievable when the alternator is outputting a charge. You won't get a 12 volt battery out that voltage unless it's charging. So yeah. that's why they've set it up there. And then all that does is very simply just joins the two batteries together. And then the when the voltage will go goes- from this one? Yeah, it just goes straight line, no, interrupting, no adjusting the voltage, yeah. no regulating. It just lets exactly what is coming out of the alternator go through into the leisure battery. Turn the engine off, voltage goes back down because it's no longer on charge, opens up, that batteries really are separate. Yeah. yeah, brilliant, fantastic, tried and tested, cost effective, but sadly, no longer any use when you've got a smart alternator because the voltage will frequently not be above that. Mm -hmm and it would also be a lot higher than you want to put straight into a standard leisure battery. So you do run the risk of damaging it if you put that in there. So that's why we're going to take that, get rid of those. Get rid of that. We don't and need that anymore. No, no. And this, is, this really applies to what sort of vehicle? So we're talking, we're talking 2015 onwards? Yeah, or? so earliest ones appear in Blue Motion, Ecotech, you mm. know, low emissions models from 2013 really once you hit 2015 16 you start to see it perhaps be the majority of vans and 2017 onwards anything euro 6 is going to have a smart alternator in it so this is where you want to use it these also work fantastically on the older vehicles so when we talk later on about some of the advantages of these even if you don't have a smart alternator you might still decide that this is for you and for those of you that aren't necessarily 100 percent sure this is a safe bet to go with these because they work old and new but typically they're used on the new ones because they're a little bit more costly than the classic reader brilliant and that's a really good piece of advice there they can actually be used 
on the older system with a standard voltage all yep. the way through. Yeah, work really Or well. they could be used um, on the newer vehicles because of those smart alternators. Brilliant, thank Absolutely. you very much. So we've covered where we would use a battery to battery charger, but we haven't yet discussed what it is and how it's different to what we've seen before. So we've got two examples, right? Yep. Um, what should we start with, the C-Tech or the Victron version? Yeah, well, we'll start with the C-Tech, okay. it's closer to me. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it? It's a battery to battery charger is exactly what it says. It's a, the equivalent of a mains battery charger, which is a mains to battery charger, i.e. mains in, battery charger. Oh, so a 240 volt, it's yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, so right. it's this, it, it is to that, mm -hmm. but obviously rather than taking its power from a 240 volt plug, it's taking it from a battery. Brilliant. And the advantage of that and the way it works is it's gonna take anywhere between nine and 15 volts roughly in, but it's gonna give you 14.4 out, which is why it's so useful for the smart alternators that have the different differing voltages mm -hmm. versus obviously a relay where you just let the power straight through, you will get whatever voltage there, which isn't always good charge voltage for a leisure battery. So that's why they're brilliant. Similar to the older relays, they will separate your batteries when you stop. You know, there's no draining your van battery when you drain your leisure battery. So they still perform the same functions as split charge, but they cater to the differing voltages and also different battery technologies. It's a lot easier to use a different technology battery between your van battery and your leisure battery. This could be a lithium battery, this could be an AGM battery, a gel battery, and there's different settings on both of these chargers for the optimal charge voltages for those batteries, maintaining their lifespan amongst several other things that they do. They also have some other cool features built in. This one has a solar and stuff. Brilliant. So you can plug in not only the charge from this, but it has an input for the solar which is this one just here. Yes. Do you need a standalone solar controller with this or will this deal no, with everything? No, this is an entire complete MPPT charge controller. The only real downside to this solar input is it's slightly limited on the voltage. It's got to be a 12 volt uh -huh. nominal panel, no yeah. more than 23 volts open circuit. You're going to find that on the sheet, data sheet, and it will actually be on the label on the back of your solar panel as well, what the maximum voltage is. If it's under 23 volts, under 250 watts, straight into there. Simplest connection you can get because you've already got the wires going to the battery. Uh -huh. Just live from the panel, earth from the panel, done. Perfect. So that's advantages yep. to the C-Tech. Yes. And there's one disadvantage that you quoted. Yeah, the biggest issue people have with the C-Tech is the fact that because it's been around for a while and it was one of the first to deal with the smart alternator, the way they got round the varying voltage was to use an ignition switch to operate the charger. So this red wire in a smart alternator vehicle has to be connected to the ignition circuit of the van and that is what will turn the charger on or off. When we come on to the Victron one, they've got an engine on detect algorithm built into it which can re remove the need for that ignition switch to be used. That can be wired in more like the traditional VSR uh -huh. compared to this would be more so like the traditional ignition triggered relay. It's kind of the two evolutions of that in okay. battery to battery charger world. So not quite a dinosaur, but no. it's a very, very capable piece of kit. Massively. It's favored by many, mainly, well not mainly, but because also it's got that solar panel yeah. input. Um, but if you do just want to install it as a standalone unit without getting that ignition trigger, you would have the other option, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And obviously the other thing to bear in mind is because this has the extra functionality, it's more expensive than that one. So if you're not gonna use it, that money could be better spent elsewhere on other things in your conversion. Um, and equally, if your panel that you're putting on or panels don't meet the requirements of this, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a standalone controller as well. So then that brings you back into using the Orion and using that because if you're going to have the standalone controller there's not a lot of point in having the built-in controller as well. Super! Well, there you go. C-Tech in a nutshell there. Let's move on to the Orion. Cool. So the Orion. Um, this has been out 18 months or so now in its oh, smart well, new, version. New yeah, it's quite, yeah, yeah, it's quite new and it's picking up pace and we're using it more and more. Um, mainly because of the biggest thing is, as we talked about, the fact that you don't need that ignition live connection. Yep. That's the biggest selling point for it. It's got a ton of other cool features, um, even as basic as it's got the heatsink, 
on the back, yeah. whereas the CTEC is um, temperature regulated, so it'll down the charge. Right. When it's hot, this will do that, but it, yeah. it can deal with heat a bit better. And it's way more attractive. It's cool, it's blue, it goes with all your other shiny And it's Victron got that stuff, logo. And it's got Bluetooth, and everything's better with Bluetooth. You can connect <laughs> an app to it, right? You can, you can get the Victron Connect app, yeah. you can link to your phone, and that's where you're gonna program settings for what type of battery you've got, um, the capacity of the batteries, a few other little things. There's not a ton of stuff on there, but there's a little bit. Yeah. The other thing which this is cool for, not necessarily in this mode, is it can be used as a power supply. So if you have something running, very specific voltage, you can power supply from it rather than charging the battery from it. Yeah. Not necessarily relevant to the that, but it's useful. It's another thing it can do, so when you've got it, it's handy. Also fine for lithium batteries, same as the CTEC. Brilliant. So you can charge from any battery on the vehicle side, and then it will take the charge, rather than being fed from the alternator, it will take the charge from the battery, convert it to the optimum voltage for whichever battery is supplying. Yeah, supply. absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. And would you say one is better than the other, or is it su suited to whatever application mm. it might one, be required One for? will be better for each situation. Okay. Brilliant. I wouldn't say if you if I had to never use one again I'd be yep. able to pick very easily but in terms of like we said earlier about the solar if you don't have it if you do have it mm -hmm. if you have a very big size of solar if you've got a hotter environment if you live somewhere where heat's more of an issue maybe the sea tech it's, it's so loads they've, of variables they've all got their own position and each t each time you do a job yeah one will be better than the other. I've installed both on different vehicles. Um, I don't have a preference either, because like you say, they've uh, been perfect for the application yeah. they're suited for. And whenever it comes to these, or any sort of charging inquiry that I may have, I always speak to James. James is always very good to us and other, on the other end of a phone. Um, and it's why we sell the Rain Automotive gear, and which is why you can, well, ask for your advice at, at any time yes. i guess yeah generally um, speaking is there any other points you wanted to you know express about these two or the battery to battery charger in general i think the only other thing i would probably can that we haven't really mentioned in too much detail is just the cost of them okay really um in terms of there's not a wealth of difference but mm -hmm. this is probably 40 odd pounds cheaper yeah and they are also they're more expensive than a split charge relay because they do they are a lot more than a, a more split charge capable relay. unit yeah. yeah and also they are gonna be better for conditioning batteries in okay. terms of they they all have the three stages of charging that you will find in any smart mains charger or anything like that whereas a split charger is just going to let whatever your alternator does go through so perhaps longevity of a battery uh -huh. might do better with one of these than the older relays just and just to clarify what are benefit. those three charges so yeah three levels got, of charging you've got bulk yeah which is the main charge the sort of filling up of the battery you've mm -hmm. got absorption which is where it slows right down to do that last bit of the battery there so it doesn't overcharge and then float is when the battery's full it just sits there if you think of it like a glass of water mm -hmm. turn the tap on if you leave it on full pelt come straight out of the top so you turn it down as you get towards the top Perfect. that's your absorption phase mm -hmm. and then if you want it to just keep it full you just let the tap drip, drip. a little bit into it perfect analogy right there brilliant well thank you very much for the explanation no if you want to learn any more about these charges or anything else regarding uh leisure wiring head over to your website yes which is www.rainautomotive.co.uk perfect brilliant thanks again james for coming today no explaining these in their entirety and i hope that has cleared things up for you uh, we are going to be doing more videos like this on the channel explaining things like what type of or the difference between batteries the difference between these split charges and we're also going to be talking about solar and a couple of other bits and pieces as well so keep an eye on those but for now thank you very much thanks again james and we'll see you next time bye bye